All right, I think I've got this figured out. It is Monday, October 12th. And uh, last week we talked a lot about uh, fake news and disinformation, right? How to spot troll accounts, how to figure out bots, where disinformation comes from and what sorts of purposes it serves. This week we're doing something a little bit more goofy. We are going to check out the difference between satire and fake news. Are you familiar with satire at all? Like satire news websites or satire information sites? Okay, so you may have seen these uh, shared on Facebook. I'm gonna try to get a new link up here if it'll let me. Has anybody heard of The Onion? So The Onion, it calls itself America's finest news source, which should be your first clue, right? <laughs> so this is The Onion. <laughs> I want you to just look at the headlines here. Mask accidentally leaves house without face. Hundreds of cane wielding demonstrators pull governor into kick line to protest Broadway shutdown. Oh, that's funny. Undecided voter still hasn't made up mind as to who won the NBA finals. <laughs> South Carolina protecting voters from COVID-19 by erecting plexiglass barrier around entire urban polling place. Okay. So. The thing about satire is that it is very clearly a joke, right? It is supposed to be clearly marked to where we can understand it. And the onion does goofy things like 10 breathtaking photos that perfectly capture the unwavering spirit of scissors. It's making fun of other news. It's making fun of clickbait news. Um, OGN is uh, the Onion Global Network, and they're, uh, uh, they do video work as well as uh, news stories. They cover sports, they cover opinion, but the clearest thing that it's supposed to do is have something that marks it as satire. On the Onion, it has several places where it tells you about what's going on. The Onion is not intended for readers under 18 years of age. So it's like, hey, you need to be an adult to be able to discern the difference between real news and satire. And if you look at the Onion's About section, it'll give you goofy things. The Onion is the world's leading news publication, offering highly acclaimed, universally revered coverage of breaking national, international, and local news events. Rising from its humble beginnings as a print newspaper in 1756, The Onion now enjoys a daily readership of 4.3 trillion. Um, if you go down, it even says things like, The Onion is now available exclusively online without charge in order to take advantage of various charity tax benefits. <laughs> They do have a real office and everything, but they ask about it. What if I want to sue the onion? Please do not do that. The First Amendment protects satire as a form of free speech and expression. The onion uses invented names in all of its stories, except in cases where public figures are being satirized. Any other use of real names is accidental and coincidental. So, the onion is supposed to clearly mark everything as satire. What's interesting about the onion, though, is that other countries where English is not the language first spoken there have taken onion articles and have reprinted or republished them as real. So, occasionally, China will get a hold of an onion article and uh, publish it as actual news. So that's where um, where satire can get itself into a little bit of trouble. The 
satire is just another way of saying that you know it is it is making fun of making fun of what's actually going on there. Sure. So here are some satirical news websites. Um, the Beaverton, Borowitz Report, Call the Cops, Cap News, Crestfire, Clickle, Sprastical, World News Daily Report, This Is That, The Onion, Real News Right Now. All of these are ones that you probably may have seen. But what they're doing is they're actually just imitating legitimate news sites, but they're containing fake news stories for the purposes of parody. They are for entertainment. They're not for disinformation. They're not literally trying to get you to believe certain things. You know what I mean? They're just trying to entertain you and be funny. And because of that, satire is satire is a smart people thing. People who are already informed about the news, right? People who already have an idea of what's going on in the world, right? Um, satire can also include television programs. I would say uh, The Daily Show is a satire news program. It is primarily for the purposes of comedy, right? The Colbert Report, um, when it was on uh, Comedy Central, primarily for the purposes of entertainment. So uh, Columbia College, by the way, is a college of journalism. Um, really impressive one, actually. And they've got some really, really great stuff. Um, the last one I'm going to show you uh, today is from the Babylon Bee. Have, any, have you ever seen anything shared on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram from the Babylon Bee? So I picked up this article because I felt like it was way too accurate not to laugh at and enjoy. I'll just let you read the uh, headline there. <laughs> so, according to sources, one local citizen has discovered a way around the mask mandate, walking around slowly eating a bag of Cheetos the entire day. Hey, I can't wear a mask when I'm eating, right? Said Bush Ballinger, local genius and snack enthusiast. I've slowed my snacking to a snail's pace, slowly bringing the Cheeto to my mouth and then chewing it for about 10 minutes. I managed to stretch out one bag for 12 hours, no mask. State regulators are panicking as they desperate, desperately struggle to find a way to close the Cheetos loophole. The governor has said he plans to announce a temporary moratorium on public snacking. Legislators are also drafting legislation to ban Cheetos forever. We must stop this menace before it's too late, said California Governor Gavin Newsom. Science has spoken and science will have the last word. I will not rest until this deadly plague of wanton snacking is defeated. Bollinger has a backup plan. If the state bans Cheeto snacking, he will simply walk around all day with a Starbucks cup to his lips. So, uh, <laughs> Babylon B is another one of these satire news websites, maybe even a little bit more clearly marked um, as satire, if that makes sense. Um, some, some satire websites are, are clearly marked, some are not. I'm going to go to the About Us and see what they have to say. The Babylon Bee is the world's best satire site, totally inerrant in all its truth claims. We write satire about Christian stuff, political stuff, and everyday life. Unlike other satire sites, everything we post is 100% verified by Snopes.com. If you would like to complain about something on our site, take it up with God. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so, um... Anyway, satire, purposes of entertainment, not necessarily for disinformation. Though you can see why satire websites are included in understanding disinformation and how fake news works and how it is spread. So, and how do we tell if something is satire? You gotta evaluate it, right? Satire is not necessarily um, inherently political. It's actually literary in a lot of ways. It's a literary work holding up human vices and follies to ridicule or scorn. It's trench and wit, irony, or sarcasm used to expose and discredit 
vice, or folly. So it is making fun of, sometimes in really sharp ways, sometimes in more funny or lighthearted ways. But ultimately, it is trying to discredit through, through showing something as being exaggerated. So this website, the Ashland University, uh, that's in Wisconsin, um, website here gives you a lot of like different different things here. Satire and consequences. Chinese mistake satire on Trump for real news. So this happened, remember I told you that um, the onion had uh, seen something and uh, the Chinese ran with it. Might not be able to read it, but um, part of the problem is there are people who will mistake satire for being real news, right? And when we deal with that, um, the follow up from that can be significant, right? Because correcting those mistakes can be um, rather difficult. So today, what I'm going to have you do is I'm actually going to have you. Um, go to the list of satire websites that were on um, the satire or fake news. Either that or you can explore the Babylon Bee. I do not know how much is blocked by our systems. <laughs> That's rough. Um, I was hoping we would be able to talk about some of the headlines, right? And how they are written um, to help us avoid disinformation, right? How does satire help or harm with our, our looking at disinformation? So, <coughs> sorry. I'm actually gonna present that to you. Do you think satire is helpful in figure out what is disinformation? Is it useful to be able to see something that is funny and pick it out from something is real in order to help hone your senses as you're actually going through news stories? Or is satire another way of muddying the waters? What do you think? So satire, satire could be problematic then. Do you think the creators of satire intend it to muddy the waters? I think sometimes it depends, right? I think there are some satire websites that think it would be hilarious if people thought they were real. You know what I mean? And they have this idea of uh, that they're not necessarily preying on people, but playing with them, right? However, satire does require the use of your brain. It requires the use of you to, to pinpoint things and fact check and, and think through them, right? Plus it is funny. I saw that Cheetos article and I about died. That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so I guess what I, what I was hoping that we could do today is find a satirical article. Um, I'd like you to find one that is very clearly satire. And all I want is the headline, okay? Um, the, the headline is enough and where it's from. And then another one that skirts that line that might possibly be mistaken if someone wasn't aware of what was going on. All right? So that's where we're headed. 